Hey YouTubers, 95 Speed GTA. Uh, today we're going to make a video for uh, one of my friends that lives down in Texas and doesn't know too much about cars. And um, this is for uh, this is for you, Kevin, and anybody else that's having some coolant issues with their car. Um, I'm going to do this video and I'm going to base it off of my 1995 Pontiac Grand Prix. Um, so you could pretty much use the information I'm about to give you for pretty much any any gasoline engine. So, here we go. Sometimes people have problems with their cooling system where it overheats, runs hot, doesn't get hot enough, or makes all kinds of gurgling weird sounds. So I'm going to show you guys how to diagnose things according to what's going on with your car. Question 1. My car leaks coolant and I don't know where it's coming from. Coolant, link, coolant leaks come from quite a few places inside the engine bay of the car, starting off with the upper coolant hose, the lower coolant hose, the weep hole from your thermostat, oop, nope, sorry, the weep hole from your water pump, a faulty seal on your radiator cap, a hole in your radiator, rotting coolant crossover pipe and rear heat lines, or worst of all, and not really wanted is a warped head gasket and a leaking head gasket or intake manifold. So this is a 3100 GM V6 on a 95 Grand Prix and obviously as you could see what my problem is is I have a leaking intake manifold. This is going to leak coolant out and you'll gradually have a loss of coolant that you could see in the bottle and the head is beginning to warp as well so this is going to need a whole upper end job really soon. So once you find the leak and determining where the leak is, as soon as you find it, fix it. And then when you fix it, you shouldn't have a problem anymore. Question two, my car runs hot, but when I, we when I rev the engine, it cools down rapidly. Maybe a couple of things, such as a stuck thermostat, a failing water pump, low radiator coolant, or a clogged up radiator. Sometimes you get a clogged up radiator after many years of use and not properly taking care of your coolant system. It's recommended nowadays on newer cars that you could change the <clears throat> coolant fluid in your car. It's either 5 years or 100,000 miles. Back in 1995 and earlier years, it lasted a lot, a lot less. So if you have like a 1995 or lower car without Dexcool, it's not going to last that long. And I strongly suggest to change it. Two most common causes of a vehicle cooling down rapidly after raising the idle of the engine is due to a faulty water pump, a water pump that's pretty much on its way out. And the telltale sign of a faulty water pump is while the water pump is spinning, there's something on the bottom of it called a weep hole. And what the weep hole does is when the pump itself starts going bad, the bearings in the pump start to turn outwards and it allows coolant to seep out of the little hole in the bottom. You'll see it dripping wherever your water pump is. So if you have a leak behind your water pump, nine times out of ten, it's because the water pump is at the end of its life. Second reason is having low coolant. Low coolant will do this because if there's not enough to go around, the engine works even harder and the coolant system works even harder to cool everything down. So you gotta make sure you have the right amount of coolant in your car reason and usually this only happens when you have just serviced a vehicle and you haven't properly bled the vehicle's coolant system of air is you have a trapped <clears throat> a trapped air pocket some cars require a special coolant fill procedure that you have to follow and if you don't it can result in overheating or raising the idle and the rpms and having the of the engine shoot down drastically when you raise the idle Question number three, my car runs hot until I get on the interstate or if I start driving and then it goes back to normal operating temperature. There's a few reasons why this could happen. Again, one, your coolant level is low. Check coolant and add is required. Two, your coolant fans may not be turning on. This is simple to diagnose. What you could do is let the car get up to operating temperature with the hood open and wait for the fans to turn on. When a vehicle gets to operating temperature, about maybe 5 to 10 minutes after getting up to operating temperature, uh, the fans will turn on 
and they'll cycle on and off, on and off. If the fans do not turn on at all, try turning, if your air conditioning's charged, try turning the AC on. If you turn the air conditioning on and the fan kicks on, by default it's supposed to do that, because it's supposed to cool down the condenser in front of the radiator. If the fans turn on with the AC on, you know you have a problem. This is a dual fan setup. The only time two fans ever come on is when the car is extremely hot. One fan is dedicated for coolant purposes only, meaning when the engine gets up to operating temperature, which for normal cars is 195 degrees, the fan turns on. This fan doesn't turn on unless the air conditioning is on in the car. Coolant temperature sensors are generally what power these fans on, and they do usually go after some time. They're usually found in the cylinder head, sometimes in the block, and on the upper intake manifold. Now believe it or not, another thing that can go that can cause the fans to not turn on are the fan relays. You may have a bad relay and sometimes, depending on what type of car it is, you may have a fan fuse and a relay. Check them out, see what's broken, see what's not working, and replace. On the 95 Grand Prix, the two fan control relays are right here. This is pretty much what your fan relays look like. Question number four, no matter what I do, my car will overheat. Whether I stop, go, on the parkway, interstate, whatever the case may be, my car always overheats. Generally, when that happens, it's because of two things. One, your head gasket is blown on your engine. This allows air to come in, and it allows a lot, a lot of things you don't want to happen when your head gasket blows. I don't want to make this video too lengthy, so I'm not going to explain. So that's the explanation I'll give you on that. The second most common reason is loss of coolant. But generally when a vehicle overheats and it takes a little while to get up to operating temperature, and then it just goes right up to H, here's a way to kind of tell that you have a head gasket problem. After it overheats, Keep away from the car, but if you do have the hood open, listen for a gurgle. You'll usually hear the gurgle in your reservoir, that your coolant recovery reservoir, it'll usually gurgle over. Those are telltale signs of an intake manifold or a head gasket failure. Next, check your oil. If your oil is a milky color and it looks similar to oatmeal, that's oil mixing in with the coolant or vice versa, uh, vice versa, depending on how the head gasket goes. A head gasket can blow internally or externally. And what I mean by that is this. Most cars that are made today are all aluminum engines. Some, like this 95 Grand Prix, is a cast iron block with aluminum heads. The problem with this is when you overheat an engine like this, you can warp the heads. And what happens is when you warp the heads, you have a perfectly flat mating surface, meaning the steel block, with a warped end or middle part of the cylinder head. Steel holds up to heat better than aluminum does. So what happens is you lose compression in your car and also breaks the seal on the engine allowing coolant to escape. When it fails internally what it'll do is you'll blow white smoke out the exhaust pipe and it'll also mi mix in with the oil in your oil system of your car and that will cause the milky um, the milky oatmeal substance color that's a head gasket failure and I don't recommend running the car any more than what it's supposed to because you will destroy the engine so remember if you ever do any kind of service to your cooling system you need to bleed the air out of the system there are special funnels that you could buy for the vehicle that fit right on top of here like a funnel like this. What it does is it replaces the radiator cap and you put it on like so. I'm not going to put it on, I'm just going to stage it on there. And for Pontiac or for certain situations like this, we get an elbow that goes up and this is what the funnel looks like. The funnel sits on top of the radiator and you pull this out, you fill it up to the top, you start the vehicle and what happens is all the bubbles that are inside the engine, or in the radiator, or in the lines, um, after about 15-20 minutes of running the car at idle, and raising the idle periodically between 1500 and 2500 RPM, all the bubbles come out through the top here, and it totally evacuates the system of air. 
that's how to properly do the coolant um, uh, it's well it's called a coolant burping procedure there's a lot of names for it but uh, if if you're the type of person that likes to work on their own cars get something like this because um, that's a proper way to bleed a coolant system but then again there are certain cars like this one that come with a notice as you can see and it says this vehicle requires a special coolant fill procedure now when you see that and it's usually on a lot of GM cars from the 90s you'll see it um, these cars have something like this on top of the um, on top of the top of the engine and it's it's a bleeder screw and there's a procedure to do that there's usually one here by the thermostat there's usually one going across you'll see that on a lot of Cavaliers and here's the other one basically what they want you to do on this particular motor is you let the engine run with the cap on and um, you let it build some pressure and you shut the car off and with the car off you open up these valves and you let the air come out close it and repeat until only solid uh, solid until only fluid comes out of the bleeders that's how you bleed this particular engine some cars well they're just happy when you use a bleeder like this to get all the air out but remember if you're replacing a lower hose upper hose thermostat water pump or a line in the back you always have to bleed the system of air because when you get air pockets that's not good for the head gasket because it'll heat up that particular place in the head gasket and it's just not all good for the overall health of the engine but not least one final thing to consider and diagnose is your heater core uh, on most cars a heater core is found inside the dashboard some are very easy to do but some are extremely hard to get out um, symptoms of a bad of a bad core are a sweet maple syrup smell that will come out of your vents when you put the heat on on the floor you may get a puddle or uh, it may just be you sopping wet all the time combination of both symptoms with the engine overheating or running very hot usually when you smell the uh, maple syrup smell coming out of the vents and uh, the coolant smell generally it's the heater core and you have to replace the heater core and depending on the vehicle you have and the condition and how difficult it is to get out all depends on whether or not you want to do it so youtubers this is 95 speed GTA I hope I help somebody out there uh, if you have any detailed questions or you need anything answered I'm always here take care guys and please rate subscribe um, well, do what you have to do thanks guys